Welcome all of you to this live program at Orthopedic Principles. Today, our guest of honor is Professor Hiranaka Takafumi from Japan. Dr. Hiranaka is Chief of Department of Orthopedic Surgery and the Director of Joint Surgery at the Takatsuki General Hospital. He's also a clinical professor of the Kyubu University School of Medicine and also yeah. Director of Ajinkai Healthcare Corporation. Dr. Hiranaka completed his orthopedic residency at the Kobe University School of Medicine in 1988. He's certified by the Japanese Orthopedic Association for Joint Arthroplasty as well as Regenerative Medicine. During his professional tenure, he's performed over 2,800 knee arthroplasties and around 640 hip arthroplasties. He has over 64 PubMed Index publications and has been a reviewer for several journals. So today it's my great honor to introduce you to Professor Takafumi Hiranaka from Japan. Over to you, Professor. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Hiranaka from Japan. Uh, I I'm working in can I see my screen? Yes, Prof. Okay. Oh, this is my hospital, the Takazi General Hospital, just between the heart of Osaka and Kyoto. It's a very convenient place to access to the Kyoto and Osaka and even Kobe. So, uh, around 10 or 20 minutes using the trains. So if you have a chance, please come and visit our hospital. So uh, we are very small team, but very active and aggressive. Today, my talk is about UKA, especially in the mobile bearing Oxford UKA. So first of all, I want to show the concept of UKA. What is the concept of UKA? Just research pre disease condition. So uh, this is a normal situation. After that, so media joint cartridge is worn out and then uh, come to bear us. But uh, using some metal components, so the surface, the joint surface and restore the predisease conditions uh, such as uh, alignment and ligament balance. So oh, this is a fundamental of UKA. This is just a resurfacing surgery and a true intra operation. So if the patient have the native various alignment, so-called constitutional various alignment, after the UK, the uh, predisease various alignment can be restored. So if the patient have the normal in the one side and another side have the ulcer arthritis after the UKA, the both legs alignment can be the same. So, uh, if the patient has a constitutional balance like this, just restore uh, MCR tension and length and restore the predisease, the patient native alignment. Never release the joints, uh, uh, never release the soft tissue to adjust the leg alignment to be mechanical. Never read this MCL. This is the principle of MCL, uh, UKA. So, uh, what is a mobile bearing UKA? So, mobile bearing stimulates uh, the meniscus. So, this mobile bearing is uh, also called uh, the meniscal bearing. So, in the native meniscus, like this, the meniscus can change its position and shape. In the extension, the meniscus is thinner and wider. And in the flexion, so according to the radius of the femur, it is uh, smaller compared to the in the flexion, uh, compared to the extension in flexion. The meniscus is the wider, uh, no, 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 thicker and narrower. Then uh, contact point, the location is moved to the posterior. So meniscus is very flexible. So filling the space between the femur and the tibia. But uh, due to the multiradius of the femur shape, so meniscus should change its shape and location. But uh, to replicate this function, uh, using the artificial material, it is impossible so far. So instead of change of shape of the meniscus, 
in the mobile variant change the shape of female. So uh, this is the female components that is the part of a sphere. This is a completely shape uh, sphere. Then a uh, bearing upper surface is perfectly conform with the, this sphere, so-called the boring socket, like total hip arthroplasty. And the under surface of bearing is completely flat and articulate with the tibia tray that is also flat. So uh, between the female uh, bearing and the bearing uh, tibia components, the conformities are perfect, perfect conformity. So we call it the fully congruent and non-constrained articulation. So what is the advantage of mobile bearing? The one advantage is minor malalignment is acceptable because of the wide contact area. And the one is very, very small amount of wear. So in the mobile bearings, the annual uh, linear wear rate is reported to be 0 0.01 millimeter. On the other hand, the fixed bearing is 10 times higher wear rate. And around 12% of revision cost is reported to be due to <clears throat> uh, the wear of the polyethylene. But uh, mobile bearing can dislocate, but never wear. On the other hand, fixed bearing never dislocate but sometimes wear. That is a difference. But I love to do the mobile variants because its concept is very perfect. I like the uh, concept of mobile variants. Of course, UKA is very important to, uh, important to patient selection. How to select the patient? It's very simple. Uh, this is a monochondylar ulcer arthritis. It's mainly the media sites. On the affected side, full thickness defect of bone, uh, full thickness defect of cartridge, so called bone bone appearance, and opposite component uh, compartment. The lateral cartridge is normal, completely normal, and intact SEO. So one side bone to bone and other side intact joint, uh, joint space and intact SL. This is the indication of UK and osteonecrosis. Interestingly, osteonecrosis is very frequent in Japan, maybe due to the very uh, osteoporotic bone. Anyway, so these are the indications of osteoarthritis. So uh, we call the indication of uh, UKA is uh, anteromedial osteoarthritis. It means ACL intact and cartilage is warm. Only the anterior part of the tibial, uh, tibial surface, tibial uh, plateau, the posterior side is intact. Uh, this implies ACL intact. If ACL is damaged, tibia move anteriorly and posterior cartilage can be worn. So uh, intact posterior cartilage implies intact ACL. No anterior transferation of tibia. So how to uh, decide the uh, intact ACL? Until dry test, your manual test or MRI or stress, anterior stress X ray or arthroscope. But in fact, to uh, evaluate intact ACL, the stress X ray is very useful. So, in the flexion in the 20 degrees and external beam slant 10 degrees and applies various and vaga stress. In the virus stress, the bone appearance uh, should be shown. And in the vaga stress, the normal lateral cartridge and the correct varus. 
Oh, can be seen. Oh, the collector of balance means the pilot joint line in the femur and the tibia side. This implies the uh, MCL and ACL functionally intact MCL and ACL. Uh, in addition, Rodenberg view is very uh, is, uh, very useful to detect bone bone and intact lateral cartilage in the same time. So, oh, this is a different angle. Is and the Rodenberg view is fracture angle is forty five degrees, but uh, stress radiograph is taken in the twenty degrees in diffraction. So we can evaluate uh, the different fraction angle. There's some patient have the, some joint space in the 20 degrees, but completely worn out in 45 degrees. So I recommend to take the standard X-ray that is uh, zero degrees in fraction and 20 degrees fraction in the Varga stress and 45 degrees in uh, the Rosenberg view. So we can see the uh, straight uh, condition of a cartridge in the three knee uh, friction angles. Uh, uh, this is the operation technique in using a microplasty, so called microplasty. So it, it is very, very uh, nice tool to very exact uh, placement of the implant. So using the spoon gauge that indicates the lowest point of the posterior cartridge and uh, using the Z clamp, this connects the spoon gauge and cutting block. So eventually cutting block set uh, the six millimeter or seven, seven millimeter below the lowest point of the posterior condyle. Oh, that is the enough space to use the tibia tray and bearing. Tibia tray is three millimeter in thickness and the bearing is three or four millimeter thickness. Eventually, so tibia cutting plane should be the six millimeter or seven millimeter below the lowest point of the fossil cone dryer, like this. So it's very nice to decide the cutting level. So uh, to, uh, to prevent the dislocation of mobile bearings, uh, because mobile bearings never fixed on the tibia tray. So uh, mobile bearing uh, moves completely passively between the space between uh, the femur component or tibia tray. So the gap should be equal in extension and fraction. So uh, using the incremental mill that adjusts the extension gap, that control ex extension gap, keeping the friction, uh, friction gap as the same, then measure the gap difference between the friction and the extension, then uh, recap the distal part of the femur using the mill. It is very, very uh, precise to adjust using, this is the spigot. I will show you how to act this one. Like this, so using the incremental milling, system using the spigot. Use the spigot uh, can uh, adjust the extent gap in the every one millimeter. So uh, evaluating the friction gap and extent gap and uh, measure the difference. So for example, friction gap is three millimeter and the extension gap is one millimeter. Then uh, we can cut the two millimeter additional distal cut using the bill and the spigot. This is a spigot, using a spigot. This is the kind of a stopper of the milling. So the, the uh, larger number of spigot, the, this color is very small, narrow one. 
then we can control the distal cutting uh, thickness in every one millimeter. Then I will move on to the video session of the operation field. Mm -hmm. So this is the normal portion, the standard portion of the UK, mobile wearer UK, using the leg holder and the leg hanging portion. Then uh, we, we should check that leg can flex fully and extension fully. And then uh, we should check the space between the popular area and this leg holder. Uh, because uh, if it touch to the pop, uh, pop the area, uh, so cutting so can damage the neurovascular. So uh, we should keep the, keep the space between the leg popliteus and leg holder. After the joint opening, also uh, also should be removed. The first of all, the also white just anterior to the insertion of ACL. This is the first step of, of osteophyte removal. Re, uh, after removal of this osteophyte, uh, so flexion contraction can be disappeared. And because this osteophyte can block the full extension. So you, uh, sometimes it is covered by the soft tissue such as uh, the fat tissue or some laminate meniscus, you should touch this area using your finger and check uh, the also white. Even uh, the small also white, you should remove completely. Then next step is remove the also white or the lateral side of the intracondrial notch. This also white can damage the ACL in the future. So prevent the uh, subsequent uh, ACL damage, you should remove the also white here. Then insert the elevator between the PCL and the medial condyle and make the space for the cytal bone cut. Uh, using uh, the electric knife, so mark the top of the uh, medial tibial spine. That is the target to the cytal cut of the tibia. And if you use this mark like this, this mark can act as uh, the saw guide. So uh, the best point is just media to the top of the medial tibial spine. But sometimes if you put the, uh, the saw blade here, that can slip to the medial. So to prevent the, prevent the slipping of the saw blade, so I recommend to make the mark here, just top of the, uh, the medial tibial spine. So make the space used here is very important because well, sometimes uh, the cytal bone, uh, bone so run like this and can, PCL can be damaged. So uh, because sometimes PCL uh, is closely attached to the medial uh, femoral condyle. So using the elevator and make the space and simulate the pathway of the cytal bones, uh, cytal bone so like this. Then remove the osteophytes, the medial edge or the medial condyle. Like this, it, this space is very important because this osteophyte can shorten the medial joint gap. After the removal of this osteophyte, the medial tightness can be resolved using the uh, 
around you, but carefully remove this uh, osteophyte completely. And between the MCL and the medial condyle, using the chisel, small chisel, protecting the MCL. At that time, take care, never damage the insertion of MCL. You can remove, you should remove the surprise. Here is very important. So, so protecting the MCL, uh, the remove the osteophyte completely. Then insert a sizing spoon. I'll insert sizing spoon just uh, the lowest point of the medial condyle and make the space. This tip of spoon and bony surface. It should be the two or three millimeter uh, because uh, this is equivalent to the cartilage thickness. So before the osteoarthritis, so cartilage surface uh, is considered to touch here. But after the uh, cartilage loss, there can be the space around two or three millimeters and then twist the spoon. If it rotates more than 20 degrees in each side, both sides, so it is too loose. So uh, one millimeter, two millimeter, and three millimeter spoon gauge is provided. So if it is too loose, change the two millimeter or three millimeter spoon gauge. After that, so set the tibia extra metallic guides like this and adjust the inclination and set the, this bar parallel to the tibia crest. Then using the Z clamp like this, this one's the Z clamp, insert to the spoon and connect with the tibia saw guide, tibia cutting block and the lock. Then this cutting block, cutting surface uh, can be six millimeter below the joint line for the three millimeter bearing. If you want to use the four millimeter bearing, so use the four G clamp. This is a three G clamp. This is a four, the three millimeter bearing. Then fix the tibia saw guide using the head the pin, headed, headed pin, but never use here and here. Uh, this hole, uh, if you insert the pin into this hole, so this hole is very close to the media cortex. Sometimes it can damage the media cortex and can, uh, can cause the fracture, tibia fracture. Then remove the seam and change to the throated seam. So using this through this throat, so horizontal cut is made first. Fix the seam and protect the material. This step is very, very important because Everything is decided by the MCL tension and length. Once you damage the MCL, everything is broken. So you should you should be careful, never damage the MCL. Please protect MCL completely. Then cut the horizontal first. The first posteriorly, then along the medial edge of the tibia, medial tibia plateau. Use the bone saw twice posteriorly and uh, along the medial border, medial border or medial cortex of the tibia medial plateau, protecting the protecting the MCL. 
Then, cytal cut. Cytal cut is should, should aim to the anterior uh, superior iliac spine, ASIS. So from the top of the medial spine toward uh, the ASIS. This is the standard of the cytal cut. Here, put on the so bone so on the top of the middle spine and adjust the uh, the direction of the so uh, cytal so to the a size at the time never hand up otherwise you cut the posterior cortex that can cause a fracture so never hand up and cut the, uh, the pallet to the upper surface of the sole guide. So, but uh, sometimes the PCL can push the sole uh, inferiorly. So it can cause a deep cut. So, so prevent the deep cut and the damage of, of posterior cortex insert the thin plate into the horizontal cut uh, before the cytal cut. After the horizontal and cytal cut, remove the bone fragment using the chisel and clamp. Sometimes the posterior root of a meniscus prevent the retrieval of bone plate. So uh, in this case, you should detach the uh, posterior root to uh, remove uh, the bone plate, tibial bone plate. Then using the drill guide, you should check the friction space gap. If you insert this uh, drill guide using a two finger and well uh, without the force, it implies the friction gap is proper. If it is tight, remove the posterior condyle uh, cartridge from the posterior condyle using the chisel to en uh, enlarge the friction gap like this. The uh, yes, posterior cartridge is removed. And then insert the drill guide. And this is iron rod. Before the uh, femoral drill, you should insert the iron rod. Then, I am rot link to the femoral drill guide. This linkage, they set the femoral drill guide in the 10 degrees in the flexion and same degrees in vargas. Uh, referring to the uh, intermediary rot. So uh, this can automatically adjust the alignment of the femoral component uh, because this drill hole decides the position of and alignment of the femoral component. Oh. Using the one hole. On the second hole, this femoral dolly guy, femoral dolly should be made at the center of the medial condyle. Uh, before uh, you make the hole, uh, you should make the mark on the center of the medial condyle like this, and set this drill guide on the. Uh, this line, marked line, or, or this base plate of this femoral dory guide, if that this uh, base of the femoral dory guide touch to the vertical cut surface, 
the relationship between the tibia tray and femoral component and bearing it can be perfect uh, because bearing never separates from the vertical wall of the tibia tray or never touch to the uh, lateral wall uh, because if you touch uh, the bearing touch to the vertical wall the bearing can push out and can cause dislocation and similarly, if the bearing separates from the vertical wall, the uh, bearing can spin. If the, this bearing spin around 90 degrees, so this jumping height reduced dramatically. The, the bearing can dislocate very, very easily. After that, so this dory guide this femoral dory guide is set uh, into the two holes previously made. Then cut the posterior condyle like this. At that time, so your hand should be down and push uh, contact the, uh, the this blade of saw blade chip tip. Uh, under surface of this cutting guide to prevent the skiving of the saw blade. Then uh, measure the thickness of bone. This thickness should be the same thickness as the component thickness. Uh, this uh, around five millimeter. So around the five millimeter is perfect for this size. This thickness is thin, thicker. Uh, if the, using the femoral component size is uh, larger. This patient is small. So uh, around the five millimeter is the perfect. Then this is the spigot. Uh, spigot is, this spigot have the color uh, that is the stopper of this mill. And then insert the spigot into this bigger hole and insert the meal. This is the reverse shape of uh, the lima of the total hip. So uh, for the total hip, the lima is convex shape, but this meal is concave shape, make the square surface on the femoral component. After that, oh, this corner bone should be removed using the chisel. Remove the spigot and using the chisel, the remove the the bone on the corner or the middle corner. To make the surface to be spare. <clears throat> then next step is mesectomy. Using uh, the clump and pull the both sides and cut the meniscus between the two clumps. Uh, you should uh, take care, never damage the MCL. So if you cut from the upper side, so uh, tibial insertion of the MCL can be damaged. So you should look upper side and the lower side of the meniscus and cut the meniscus completely. So, uh, you should check again and check again that, oh, that media meniscus is removed completely. If there is any remnant meniscus in the posterior side, 
of the media joint space. This membrane meniscus can push the belly anteriorly that can cause the dislocation. So prevent the dislocation. So posterior horn of the meniscus should be uh, removed completely. Uh, on the other hand, the media side of meniscus can be uh, left around one millimeter. That can protect the MCL from the bearing. So meniscectomy it should be uh, done from the upper side to the lower side. If you cut like this, this uh, the knife can damage the tibia's uh, insertion of the meniscus uh, MCL. So uh, you should pull the both sides and looking at the upper side and the lower side and cut. Then cut should posteriorly. And if the uh, meniscus is cut completely, uh, this meniscus come anteriorly, then curve to the laterally and cut the posterior, uh, posterior edge of the meniscus and the between the capsule. Then insert the tibia template, tibial, uh, tibial trial, this tibia tray should be a little bit overhanged, never underhung, because underhanging causes the subsidence. And using a T handle and catch the posterior cortex and push the tibia uh, template to the T handle. So to uh, the posterior surface to be fresh, posterior cortex and uh, Posterior edge of the tibia tray should be fresh in the same plane. Then insert the femoral component and using the filler gauge, uh, a kind of uh, the spacer, and evaluate the flexion gap. This filler gauge should be inserted using the two finger without the folds. If you uh, insert uh, the, this uh, filler gauge very tightly, it can extend the joint gap. So it can cause the abnormal stretch of the MCL. Uh, that should be avoided. So this filler gauge should be inserted using the two fingers the very light touch with a very light touch. Then, evaluate the extension gap. A extension gap should be evaluated at 20 degrees of knee flexion. Again, this filler gauge should be inserted using a two finger with very lightly. So, in this case, pressure gap is three millimeter using uh, the three filler gauge and extension gap is one millimeter. So we need a two millimeter additional cuts from the distal end of the femur. So uh, the initially use the spigot zero and then use the two size spigot. Two size spigot means two millimeter additional bone from the distal end. They catch the posterior cortex and push uh, the tibia tray posteriorly. Then fix the tibia tray like this. You're using the, this pin, fix the tibia tray on the cutting surface of the tibia. Then make the keel slot for the keel. Uh, keel is a very important to fix, the secure the fix of the tibia tray. Uh, but it is a quite a dangerous step uh, because 
this kill slot can damage the posterior cortex. So posterior cortex and the posterior, uh, posterior end of the tibia tray should be in the same plane. If the this uh, tibia tray overhang the posterior, kill slot can move posterior and sometimes it damage the posterior cortex. Posterior cortex damage can cause a fracture. This fracture is uh, fre prevalent, very fre frequent in Asian countries uh, because Asian, many Asians have the very small frame, very small bone. Anyway, uh, set the tibia tray properly on the uh, tibia cutting surface and secure, securely fix using the, this pin and using uh, the special saw for to make the key slot. Never push this saw posteriorly because like, uh, sometimes it can move uh, posteriorly with the template. So this, uh, this uh, bow saw should use inferiorly. Then up, and post uh, inferiorly, up and down, up and down. What we call is a dolphin technique, like the dolphin in swimming, the dolphin in the sea, like like this. So next is uh, anti impingement guide. Uh, this can uh, remove the uh, bony impingement anteriorly and posteriorly. In the anterior part, using the special mill like this, uh, similar to the calcar lever uh, for the total hip. Then, uh, this is the final check. Uh, the insert, the trial bearing, and the trial, trial of femur and the uh, tibia component, and the move extension to the full, ex, full extension to the full fraction and check the behavior of the bearing. So sometimes it can spin or push out from the, post, uh, from the uh, posterior to the anterior. That implies there is some uh, something posterior to the femoral component such as remnant meniscus or posterior uh, osteophyte. So if there is some uh, some spinning or some push from the posterior side, uh, you should remove the trial and check the posterior of the joint. Uh, so sometimes you can use the finger and you can feel some osteophytes on the posterior to the posterior condyle. If you feel the osteophyte here, you should remove it. And sometimes the remnant of meniscus is very thick. That also push the bearing anteriorly. You should remove the, the bearing completely. This is a final check. And then the femur, uh, this is the tibial side using the cement, the fix, the tibial component. Then for the cementing using the chisel, you should push the cement into the bone, so-called cement penetration. So that that can prevent the tibia side loosening. Uh, you should put the, some cement on the, the surface of the tibia tray and push down and impact. But at that time, never use the heavy hammer uh, because it can cause the fracture. So you should use a very light nylon hammer and hit very carefully. And then check the leaked cement here. 
this cement fragments sometimes cause the pain. So you should check the cement around the tibia tray. Uh, it is very difficult to remove and check, even check the uh, cement on the posterior side of this tibia tray. So you can see the very carefully. And sometimes using the tea hunt and the, uh, the search, the posterior surface of the tibia tray. Uh, and anyway, you should remove the cement completely. And for the female, female, uh, female side, on, on this is the cement check for the tibia side. Yes, so remove this one. And just check the posterior cement. Oh, this case is no, no cement here. Now for the female side, put, on the, put the cement on the cutting surface and especially push the cement into the peg hole that can increase the stability of you know, the femoral component and femoral implantation. Like they put in the cement and hit. Then remove the leak, the cement here. And the both sides, anteriorly, medial, and lateral. And also you should check the media side to the component like this. The finery insert the same uh, mobile bearing like this here. Extension and flexion and check the stability of the bearing like this. This case is perfect. Oh, there is a three difficult point to uh, power, perform the uh, UKA, especially for the beginner surgeon. The first is the tibia bone cut. So most important is to protect the MCL using the uh, protector like this, this one, like this. And to protect the MCL, you sometimes detach the MCL a bit from the media border of the tibia tray, uh, tibia, media tibia border. The first three cut the posteriorly along the tibia spine, then cut along the retractor. So cut the media cortex like like this. So uh, sometimes uh, this retractor is uh, come wide from the cutting frame at powered or lower side. So you should check uh, the, not only the level, but the direction of uh, the product. Uh, protector. Sometimes this protector can move like this or like this. So in this situation, if you cut the bone here, the, this part is protected, it was posterior side is not protected. So that can cause the partial damage of the MCL. And the next difficult, uh, difficult point is meniscectomy. It is very, very difficult. In a special for the beginner surgeon. The first step is cut the anterior horn of the medial meniscus, then cut along the border of the uh, medial tibia plateau. Then, uh, sorry, cut posteriorly and completely cut the meniscus. If you cut here and here, 
the meniscus can move anteriorly uh, because uh, in this situation, only the posterior capsule touch it to the meniscus. So then meniscus can be more mobile than cartilaterally between the meniscus and the posterior capsule. So three different points is the evaluation of the gap. So so-called two finger technique, the pinch, the feeler gauge using the two fingers, and this uh, feeler gauge can be come in and come out easily without force. Uh, this is the idea. So sometimes we we'll worry about the dislocation. Uh, the surgeon tend to select the thicker bearing, but this is uh, not true uh, because the ideal exercise feeler gauge is very loose, feel low, loose, very loose, and no friction. But plus one thicker uh, feeler gauge is very tight. Uh, this is, is uh, uh, perfect. But uh, war, uh, due to the worry about the dislocation of the barrier, so beginner surgeon uh, tend to select one size up a little bit of tight feeler gauge, but uh, tight bearing can cause abnormal damage, uh, chronic damage of MCL and ab abnormal elongation of MCL. That can also cause the dislocation. So ideally loose, but one size uh, up feeler gauge is tight. That is the idea. A friction evaluation of friction gap is uh, relatively easy, but in the extension is a little bit difficult because to apply the vulgar stress, uh, mild vulgar stress, but never force vulgar stress. The vulgar stress is only the less to a the MCL normal tension and length. So called end point. So you can apply the burger stress and can stop automatically. That is the point. Never pause uh, the stress. That can stretch the MCL and overestimate the medial gap. So this feeling is very important and burger stress and stop so-called end point, then evaluate. It is very important. So to, to evaluate this feeling before the surgery, uh, you can feel the end point of the MCL. So into the uh, interoperatively, you can also feel the same feeling of the end point of MCL. Uh, this angulation uh, should be the uh, 20 degrees in fraction, which is important. So uh, for the successful uh, UKA surgery, is you should do surgery bone and bone. If you do the surgery, UK surgery, uh, more than 55 cases annually, the revision rate is reduced. So one problem of the UKA is uh, the higher revision rate compared to the TKA. But you do the UK surgery more, uh, the uh, revision rate can be reduced dramatically. Uh, not only the volume, but also the percentage is reported to be important. If you do the UK surgery around 40 to 60, the revision rates come to lower, lowest. So uh, ideally, you can, if you do the UK surgery, a half patient 
of the arthroplasty, that should be the best. In this hospital, around 6% is UK surgery. Uh, in the same time, so uh, now uh, to know a lot about the UK is very important. So uh, in 2011, 12 years ago, I visited to the Oxford and stay in the, stay in the Oxford six, for six months and learn a lot about UKA. Uh, this is the designer's hospital of the Oxford UKA. It was a very uh, good situation. It's a very nice experience. But uh, now uh, I provide the perostic system to learn the Oxford UK and TK. Uh, our hospital is the authorized training hospital for the uh, for the foreign doctors. So if you apply the official perostic system, uh, we can provide uh, the local medical license in Japan. And after the fellowship, we can provide the OSHAR certification from our hospital and in the same time from our government, the Japanese government. So many doctors come to my hospital and using this therapy system. And many, I love to collaborate with the many doctors, especially you know, foreign doctors. Uh, I Sometimes I went to the many countries such as Thailand, uh, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Myanmar. And the many surgeons come to my hospital. So if you're interested in uh, the UK, and if you want to learn more about the Oxford UK, please contact me by email, and uh, I can uh, answer your question. Um, Anyway, uh, this is a very short time to present the everything of the UK. But anyway, if you have any question, please contact me. Well, thank you for my attention. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, Prof, you can uh, stop sharing. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you, Professor Hironaka, for this amazing presentation, and congratulations for your excellent track record on uni knees. Uh, Prof, few questions from our side. Prof, is there any difference in long term between a fixed bearing UK and a mobile bearing uni? Mm, I believe it is the same, but as long as the uh, the surgeon is very uh, expert have the very good experience. Familiarity is very important. If the patient is have the good experience in the fixed berry, the results should be perfect. If uh, the surgeon, if the surgeon is very, very expert in the mobile berry, the patient will be happy. Anyway, the difference of Peak bearing of mobile bearing is important, but more important is the patient, uh, sorry, the surgeon experience and the knowledge. Uh, because uh, UKA is very, very uh, technical demanding operation. Thank you, Professor. Professor, if I'm right, you performed around 1,500 duties, right? Yeah. And uh, how was your initial experience? What was your learning curve initially? Did you have any spin out of the this? Uh, bearing surface. Mm -hmm. Polyamine. Uh, it is difficult to do. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think 100 maybe. But for now, I have find, uh, I also still find the new things in my operation so far. So learning curve is uh, never ending. Maybe anyway, uh, if you experience the first uh, 100 case, after that you can uh, do the surgery 
who is very smooth and very speedy, uh, speedy and without any trouble. But anyway, so, you know, within 100 case, you, the surgeon can explain, uh, experience uh, the, some complication. For example, fracture, dislocation, or subsidence. But if you are uh, some surgeon, the worry about the complication, the stop the UK due to the complication. If you overcome <laughs> this complication and analyze uh, what is the cause of the complication, and then uh, the surgeon can find the solution to overcome uh, the complication. The, the surgeon continue uh, the improvement, improving uh, the skill and the knowledge. So anyway, don't stop the first complication. <laughs> this is very important. Thank you very much, Professor. Professor, and what about the contraindications for an uni knee? Now, traditionally, in 1989, there was a very famous mm. paper by Scott and Cousin. For yeah, example, yeah. weight more than 82 kilograms, age less than 60 years, and uh, petal, presence of petal of femoral arthritis. These were not supposed to be yes. good candidates for a uni knee, right? So what is your yes. take on that? In the field of, of, of uh, mobile bearing, UK... Uh, never mind their contra Scott and causing and Scott contraindication, uh, heavy weight and patera, uh, patera femoral joint disease, as long as there is no bone loss and subluxation that are very severe, uh, osteoarthritis and a patient activity and control carcinosis, it does not matter. Uh, there is uh, some paper is a uh, there is uh, no difference the with much to the cousins the contraindication and without the causing the indication the result is uh, similar as long as the patient have the intact lateral cartilage and the intact ACL but uh, this is an important point in my experience in my patient at least 40 or 50 percent can be a candidate for the UK. But in fact, the uh, the percentage of UK is around 8 to 10 percent in every country, in Japan as well, around 8 percent. I, I don't know the difference <laughs> of the true indication of uh the UK and uh true percentage of UK surgery. of course that causing the contraindication of the one reason but many surgeons never do the UK because of the worry about the contraindication uh no no the complication or the bad experience or, or bad uh but a feeling for the UK, that is the point. So I uh, frequently demonstrate the <laughs> advantage or the benefit of UK in the many places and recommend the surgeon the place to the UK. That is because the patient is very happy, especially in the age of countries uh, where the patient needs the deep friction after the surgery. It is absolutely different in terms of post-operative friction angle. Uh, in after the UK, around 10 or 10 degrees deeper in the friction. This is the one uh, obvious benefit of the UK. Thank you, Professor. Prof, we are also joined by Loy El Khatib. Loy is an orthopedic surgeon based in Dubai. Uh, Loy, welcome to the show and your questions to Professor Hiramaka, please. Yeah, hello. Good uh, good evening, guys. Hey. Uh, thanks a lot for the presentation. I feel more confident enough now to do the uni or the hemiarthroplasty of the knee after your presentation. Thanks a lot. One of the questions or debates that we are talking about nowadays is about ACL deficient knees. Hmm. Would you still 
or in medial compartment arthritis in young patients, would you still do a uni for these guys? Or yes, uh, yes, is... yes, yes. Uh, I believe this is uh, this is not uh, uh, believe, but I believe the ACL deficiency only is not a control indication. In fact, I do the UK sometimes to for the patient is the ACA deficient patient, but it, but it is very rare that this patient have the ACA deficient but completely intact lateral cartilage. The most uh, the patient with the ACA deficient is the lateral cartilage already damaged. But sometimes around the ten percent. Or five to ten percent have the ACA deficient or the very, very clear lateral cartilage. In such patients, I do the UK only if the patient is over the 40, 75 or 80 years or born. Uh, this is uh, the priority is low invasiveness. Oh, so invasiveness is very different to the TK and the UK. UK is very, very low invasiveness, so it is very efficient for the older patient. In such patient, I reduce the posterior slope. Normally, the posterior slope is seven degrees. Uh, but for the uh, ACL deficient patient, I reduce the posterior uh, slope five degrees or three degrees. Uh, that can improve the longevity of the UK. But if the patient is very young, for example, 60s, uh, the early 70s, I reconstruct the ACL in the same time. The same time, okay, so you do, in the same you time. do a staging procedure. So you do the ACL first, and then you go or you, you uh, do after the, the imp After the implantation, I- oh, Okay, so uh, you plant uh, your because, procedures. Because, yeah, yes. Yeah. So for the, this patient, I make the, Tibia drive for from the lateral side. Nice. So because media side can uh, impinge to the uh, tibia tray. So I to avoid the impingement of the uh, tibia tray, I drive from the lateral side. So but it is quite easy because <laughs> we can see the everything. <laughs> That's true. So you can do yeah. open ACL reconstruction. Yeah. Yeah. But why you don't do the HTO for these guys? Let's say uh, medical problems. Uh, yeah, things. yes, this is a very <laughs> uh, difficult question. In fact, I battery. Uh, do you believe that? I will never, I never the know. Same? I never do the uh, HTO. Because I believe uh, that I don't uh, manipulate the patient native alignment. Because uh, concept is completely different. Uh, because HTO is a realignment surgery. So UK is, uh, is to restore the patient native alignment. So we respect you, the uh, patient native alignment. I uh, I don't want to manipulate the patient the natural native alignment. So, but uh, maybe the patient with the pa uh, partial thickness cartridge wear uh, patient is not indication of the UK, but uh, the such patient can be a candidate for the HTO. But in my uh, situation, I have virtually no experience of HTO. So I recommend the UK uh, for the every patient. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Do, is there any weight limit for performing a UK? Is there any way that it's okay for the patient to say, okay, no, no go for this? No, uh, no, no contraindication. No, in terms of weight bearing, there is uh, some evidence. So weight bearing, uh, weight is uh, not affect to the uh, awesome. long term. Yeah. What one last question is: yeah. Would you, use, if you want to convert it from UK to, to uh, total knee? Yeah. Would you able, just technical wise, would you able to use the same incision? 
Yes. Is there yes. any way you should use the same? No, no, no. <laughs> same as uh, a little bit extends the easy jump. I uh, always use the subbusters approach. Mm -hmm. uh, extend and uh, retract the patella. That's all. But uh, the, if the patient has the very, very clear, uh, the good, nice ACL, I add to the lateral UK, so called the bi compartmental regional suppressive, to uh, keep the function of ACL. So I'm now uh, focusing on the uh, base by each component with arthroplasty, how to do very easily, uh, how to do uh, the reproducibility. It is my well, second my second challenge <laughs> because <laughs> awesome. I uh, yeah I want to uh, retain the AC as uh, much as many as possible. Is that, yeah. The AC is very important uh, yeah. for me. Yeah. <laughs> Hitesh, I think we need to sign up for his fellowship program in <laughs> Japan. What do you think? Sure. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Professor. I think that's all the yeah. questions that we have for this session. Thank you mm. for this amazing presentation. And I'm sure thank this is going you. to benefit a lot of people mm. all over the world. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank Thanks you. a lot, Prof. Thank Take you. Thank you. Bye. Cheers.